seems the UK's Rwanda plan could be working in a way because Ireland's in meltdown over mass numbers of migrants apparently coming over from Britain. And this rise of tented cities has led to outbreaks of riots and even petrol bombs across the country. Well, I can now speak with Irish talk show host and broadcaster Niall Boyler. Niall, welcome to the show. A pleasure to have you. You're a fantastic broadcaster. And I'm proud to say um, that here at GB News, unlike a lot of the establishment media, we have been keeping a very close eye on what's been going on in Ireland and the political divisions it's been caused and the treatment of citizens, regular citizens who object to mass migration being called far right and worse by the political class and the media. Niall, we're approaching elections in around about a week's time. Tell me, what's the mood like in Ireland and do you think there's appetite for change? I think there's more than appetite for change. I mean, we see a government who have been completely ignoring the people and not just ignoring, they proactively encouraged this, to be honest with you, over the last five or six years. And when I was working on radio, I had to give it up there recently, but I was working on radio, I was listening to my callers and my audience telling me one thing and government politicians who I spoke to telling me something completely different. So the disconnect had become huge. So the government are going to get a good kick in in this election, I imagine, including the opposition who've been equally as bad and sat idly by for the last five years and did absolutely nothing about it. They're now all scrambling with headlines saying, you know, we're going to take a, a hard approach to immigration. We're going to charter planes. They're saying all these things now because we've got a week to an election. But the public don't believe them anymore. It's getting worse by the day. Again, and for the fifth time in the last two months, we've seen these tents being removed. And here's the madness of this. The government are funding NGOs who are providing these tents. Mm. The government are coming along, removing them with those big claw diggers that you can see on the screen there, and then giving the NGOs more money to buy more tents to give them the next day. And by the next day, these are all gone today. But by tomorrow, there'll be 50 more tents. And not only that, when they take the tents up, they put these barricades up so average citizens can't even walk past their own. It's a very famous and beautiful canal that runs through Dublin. It's getting completely out of control. And I'm sure Rishi Sunak is absolutely delighted with himself with his Rwanda plan because maybe they won't be going to Rwanda but they're coming to Ireland. That's where they're sending them. And today makes it a lot worse because we have a High Court case today in Ireland. Uh, the Irish Human Rights and Equality Commission are taking the state to court, essentially saying you have an obligation to these asylum seekers to house them or accommodate them and to triple the money that you're giving them. We're all already feeding them, educating them, clothing them, giving them health care, providing them with everything we can. Currently there's 96,000 of them in accommodation across the country, state accommodation, and now they want to triple the money to give them 339. That's more than pensioners get in this country. It's more than anybody gets in this country, and we're being asked to do this. We're just the land of milk and honey for asylum seekers here. And, and Niall, um, there's a critical housing shortage in Ireland. There's a huge pressure on public services already. All of this is being exacerbated by the scenes we're seeing on the screens, and that leads me to the political backlash. We've had a political consensus on this. We've even got a T-Soch in Simon Harris to recognising the state of Palestine this week. How does that land with voters who simply care about you know, being able to fall to get, go to school, being able to afford a house, get a doctor's appointment? I mean, when I speak to people and they say, you know, they're worried that their children are going to leave the country because they can't afford to live in their own cities anymore, their cost of living is rising, they're worried about immigration. Nobody over the last few weeks has turned around to me and said, I wish the government would recognise the state of Palestine. We need to get our own shop in order before we start worrying about the rest of the world or something that's six or 7,000 miles away. Although, of course, we all, you know, condemn the deplorable scenes we see of war, be it in Ukraine and Russia or Palestine and Gaza. But I mean... We need to get our own house in order, and we're not doing that. And we're seeing, you know, other political parties in the in the country encouraging this. What they want to do is, oh, well, let's speed up the process of these applicants for asylum, most of which are coming from the UK to Northern Ireland, by the way. Let's speed up the process to get them into accommodation, where I'm saying, and other people are saying, well, no, you know, people who are genuinely coming from war and fleeing persecution absolutely look after them, but the majority are not. The Minister for Integration has said himself that over 60% of these people are economic migrants. That's probably a conservative estimate. And most, over 80%, are coming through Northern Ireland from the border. Now, nobody wants to see a border back in Northern Ireland. We fought tooth and nail, of course, during Brexit to keep the backstop out. So I think the only suggestion or solution for us now, and what a lot of people are suggesting, is a border down the Irish Sea. In other words, that we have reception centres and processing at Larne, Belfast, George Best International Airport to stop them coming into Northern okay. Ireland in the first place. In other words, you can keep them. Okay, now I bought it. We have to leave it there. Excellent as ever. Thank you very much. Now we